What's happening guys, it's Box and Lowdown and I'm back here with another video. Now, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment if you like and I'll happily get back to you. Now, uh, what are the five fights that you would like to see if you had a chance to make them, let's say within the next year or so, uh, what would be the five fights that you would really like to see? Uh, trying to forget about politics for a moment and um, just some fantasy fights that you'd like to see. I'm gonna give you some of mine. Um, probably in no particular order, but like I'll just throw them out there and uh, I want you guys to let me know what you think of the fights that I've chosen and if you've got any different fights, because I'm sure that there are plenty of fights that we'd all like to see, uh, let me know, like drop yours in the comment and I'll comment on yours, but I'm going to give you mine and the first one is a pretty obvious one, it's what we all want to see, I think we can all unanimously agree on this, um, everybody in boxing wants to see it and that is the undisputed heavyweight title fight between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. Now, uh, it really just speaks for itself, doesn't it? I mean, it's the biggest British fight ever to be made. Uh, it's for all the marbles, all of the heavyweight title belts. It will be Britain's first undisputed heavyweight champion since Lennox Lewis. And it will just be a massive, massive event, man. I mean, it would, it would just shut down everything. Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury, if it was to happen in the UK, that is. Uh, if it was to happen abroad, then obviously it would disappoint a lot of us. But for me now, at this stage, I think I just want to see it. Even if it is held in like Saudi Arabia or somewhere else, I just want to see it because I think that we need an undisputed heavyweight champion. We need a number one in the division. And the only way that that can be settled is if Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua fought. Now, we know that there are some stumbling blocks in the way. We know that Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder have a third fight booked in. And we know that Anthony Joshua has a mandatory defence of his IBF title to make against Kubrat Pulev. So those are the sort of obstacles in the way of that. But my first fight, yeah, if I was to choose, then it's obviously going to be Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. A tremendous matchup, different styles, different characters, uh, two Brits, do you know what I mean? It would literally have the whole country watching. And um, yeah, I think it'd be great. So that is my first one, obviously. Uh, the second one now, uh, let's move on to that. I'm going to say Terence Crawford against Errol Spence Jr. is one of the fights I really, really want to see. And again, this fight just speaks for itself, man. You've got two amazing talents in the world to weight division on the pound for pound list, both of them, both of them world champions, both of them undefeated. I mean, this is what really boxing is about, isn't it? You want to see two undefeated champions going at it, fighting each other. Like, that's the sort of fights that you want. And I just think that this style matchup is like, it's a great style matchup for both of them. Uh, Errol Spence, fantastic at body punching, um, brilliant at walking a man down. He's got tremendous fundamentals of his own. Terence Crawford, outrageous ability, former undisputed champion at 140 pounds. Uh, we've seen these two go head to head behind the scenes at uh, one of the fights. I can't remember which fight it was, but backstage they were going head to head. It was all friendly banter, but you could just tell the competitive nature of these two. If they were to go in the ring, it would just be, both of them would give it all. You know that, they would put it all on the line and it would be a significant fight as well. I think it's a great fight to be made and I hope that it could be made soon. Obviously with Errol Spence, he's recovering from his car crash that he suffered towards the end of last year. And um, with Terence Crawford, he's on the top rank side of things, uh, Errol Spence's PBC. So we know that there are some obstacles there to be made, but it can be done as we've seen with Fury and Wilder. So I think that that fight is a possibility, but I think we need to see how Errol Spence is in like maybe one fight back before we can um, talk about that fight. So maybe next year, that's something that we can look at. But that's definitely a fight I've been wanting to watch for a long time, uh, Errol Spence Jr. against Terence Crawford. So that's my number two. Number three. Now, I think that this is a fantastic fight. Again, two champions, both of them undefeated in the light heavyweight division. I'm going for Artur Baturbiev against Dmitry Bivol. Uh, both of them Russian fighters. I think it's a tremendous showdown. And I think that it's uh, Artur Baturbiev really... Uh, rose to prominence by defeating Vostek to become the unified light heavyweight champion. He's got the WBC and the IBF titles. Uh, Dmitry Bivol, he's got the WBA title. And I just think his skill set could give Baturbiev trouble. But a lot of people thought that with Vostek as well. But I think with Bivol, I think he probably hits a bit harder. And uh, he, like I said, he's got a tremendous skill set. But Baturbiev is just unrelenting, man. I mean, he's it's going to be hard for somebody to break this guy down and to stop him from coming at you. And um, he has been knocked down before, but he's just got tremendous power, man. The guy, he's knocking over everybody. So I think that, that is a fantastic fight. And uh, it'll be a massive fight over there in Russia as well. 
And I think it will just probably the winner of that fight, well, definitely, the winner of that fight has to be considered number one, even if they're not going to be the undisputed champion. I think there's another belt out there. Um, they're still going to be the number one, in my opinion. I mean, Canelo, he had the WBO title, actually, but he vacated that. But with these two guys now, whoever wins that is the number one at light heavyweight. And uh, most of you guys, including myself, or Phil Batabiev is right now, considering his resume. But I think Bivol is the best person out there for him to fight. And I'd love to see it, man. So hopefully that can be made. I don't think it's an impossible uh, task to do. Uh, Bob, uh, who's Batabiev with? Batabiev is with Bob Rank. Uh, Bob Aram, top rank, sorry. And um, Bivol is with Matchroom. So I think that could be made. Uh, that's one to definitely consider for the future. Now, uh, number four. I'm just going to throw it out there, man. The lightweight division. Just throw them all in there and pick two out. And I'd like to see those fights. So I'm talking about Lomachenko, Ryan Garcia, Javante Davis, Devin Haney, Luke Campbell, you know, Tiafimo Lopez. Just put all those names in a hat and just like pick two out. And that's a fight I want to see. I mean, that's how exciting the lightweight division is right now. Of course, we've got Vasil Lomachenko versus Tiafimo Lopez. That would have been scheduled for May. However, that's obviously not going to happen now. Um, hopefully that fight can um, that fight will resume once obviously this pandemic is over. We can look forward to that. But there are just so many fights out there. Devin Haney, Javante Davis maybe, Ryan Garcia, you know, Tiafima Lopez, like Luke Campbell still in the mix. So I think that that's a tremendous division. It's very exciting. A lot of young guns in there all trying to be at the top. Vasil Lomachenko, an outrageous talent. Uh, probably number one or number two on most people's pound for pound lists. And um, yeah, I just think it's a tremendous division, really exciting, and just put any two names in a hat, and I'd like to see them fight each other. That's how good the lightweight division is. So that's rich what I'm gonna say for that. And uh, number five, let me think of number five. Um, there was a few, so I mean, I'm gonna have some like fights where, as honorable mentions, but there were a few that I considered for number five, but I'm gonna ultimately go for uh, Triple G against Jamal Charlo. I think that that's just a great stylistic matchup. Triple G has the uh, IBF middleweight title. He's obviously he's looking to fight Canelo. However, um, again, with this whole pandemic, we don't know what's going to happen with the scheduling of fights. Canelo was due to fight Billy Joe Saunders in May, then um, Triple G in September. However, uh, with this whole pandemic now, this is likely going to be pushed back. So I don't know. I'd love to see Triple G in there against Jamal Charlo. Is it a realistic possibility? Probably not. Uh, Jamal Charlo does have the WBC um, regular title I suppose and Canelo is the franchise champion so I don't know is it a unification fight but I'd love to see Jamal Charlo and Triple G get on with it because I think that them two it's a great clash of styles uh, Jamal Charlo can punch he's quick but Triple G even though he's 38 and aging a little bit he's still got tremendous technique he's still got power in both hands and I think it's a great test for Charlo so uh, that's a fight that I'd like to see but some honorable mentions in there I have to say Josh Taylor against Jose Ramirez for, you know, light welterweight supremacy. That is obviously a massive fight. In terms of significance, it's definitely a lot more significant than the likes of um, a Jamal Charlo and a Triple G, for example. But I just think that, um, yeah, I think that is on its way to being made. But like I said, this list is just my own personal view of fights. I mean, there's no right or wrong particular answer here. It's just literally what I like to see. But in terms of significance, yeah, Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez is a massive fight. And um, hopefully we're on the way to that happening. So that's definitely one of them. Another one that deserves an honourable mention for me is uh, Shakur Stevenson and Josh Warrington. I'd love to see that fight, man. I think that that was, we've seen the negotiations for that, like being held openly on Twitter and everything else. I think it was a couple of days ago, um, Shakur Stevenson and Eddie Hearn were going back and forth. Then Andre Ward got involved. But in terms of stylistic matchups, again, this is one I'd love to see. Josh Warrington is relenting, man. I mean, it's going to be so hard for somebody to beat this guy. And uh, Shakur Stevenson is one of the bright young talents in the US. He's even willing to come over to England to fight him. He's got tremendous skills, but against Josh Warrington, I mean, that's going to be a very difficult fight, man. But I'd love to see it because I just think the stylistic matchup, the crowd, the energy, I think it'd be a great fight. So, uh, yeah, that's just my list. And uh, let me know what you guys have for yours. Uh, let me know what you think of mine as well. Comment in the comment section below. And uh, just a special note to thank you all for subscribing to the channel. And I'll be doing some more videos as and when I can. So we'll also be doing them every day, actually. So um, look out for those and any other news. I'll be dropping them on this channel as well. So thank you all for watching, guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.
What's happening guys, it's Boxing Lowdown here. Click the link in my bio and check out some of our brand new t-shirts which have just been restocked. We have white, yellow, red and black, all going for the low price of £15. Thank you guys again for tuning in and I'll make sure to catch you on the next video.